This is another progress report for my Arduino coil on plug controller. I might call it the April progress report, although I may have more stuff done by the end of this month. I have now switched to an Arduino Robo Red just to try one out. I am still using the same distributor uh, crank sensor setup, but I've added a strobe light that flashes at trigger speed just because I can. Besides, as soon as I start adding Spark Advanced code, it will be useful for visual verification that the advanced system is working. I also added an I2C LCD display that shows RPMs, change in RPMs, and COP trigger signal pulse length. But the big deal for today is that I am now able to adjust the coil trigger length from one millisecond in length to as long as eight milliseconds in length. I am doing this to see what the optimum charge time is for any given coil, be it coil on plug or not. I have added a low ohms resistance of about 0.1 ohms in series with the power ground to the coil on plug pack, not to the signal ground in, uh, back to the Arduino. Now with the oscilloscope, I can see the coil primary charging current wave shape. This allows me to add trigger length until the waveform starts to exhibit a flat top telling me that any more current flow will only heat the coil without adding to performance. By the way, the low ohms resistor that you'll see later is made from nichrome wire saved from an old clothes dryer heater or something like that. Here you can see the LCD information. Right now we are just looking at RPM and RPM change and to see how the strobe stops the distributor rotor. Here you can see the strobe light flashing and the distributor rotor looks like it's dead still. And you can see that the rotor doesn't appear to move at all. There are little black marks on both ends of this two-pole two rotor. Now I'll turn the lights back on so you can see what the rotor looks like when it's standing still. Now if you look at the RPM change on the LCD here, you can see how well or how poorly regulated my little rotor motor is. Now we will see how long it takes to fully charge this particular COP PAX primary coil. This saturation point will vary from one type of coil to another from what I have read. So that's why I want to know for sure how much coil time charge is needed when I write code for my own system. We are measuring the voltage drop across a very low value resistor that is in series with the COP pack chassis ground. Since the current will vary with the voltage, we are essentially seeing the current pulse there. I really don't care what the voltage is, as long as it is high enough so the scope can read it. Watch as we increase the trigger length in one millisecond increments from one millisecond to eight milliseconds. I'm going to slowly turn the knob and tell you how many milliseconds we're sending for trigger pulse. There we're at one millisecond. Two milliseconds. Three milliseconds. four milliseconds, five milliseconds, six milliseconds, se seven milliseconds, and eight milliseconds. Notice that, that at the peak the trace begins to flatten out as we increase the pulse width or dwell time. I think that's saturation occurring. 
As far as I can tell, there's no point in extending the charging time beyond the beginning of this flattening point. Which occurs somewhere between 3 and 4 milliseconds on this particular coil. Here is my low value resistor. It's just a short piece of nichrome wire ground to the uh, battery ground, chassis ground of the car, and the other end of this tiny little resistor goes to a, a 1x scope, scope probe and obviously up to the oscilloscope. It's really good to get this coil dwell time info by actually finding the saturation point on the scope. But it's also interesting to me at least to be able to actually see and hear when that point occurs. I am going to increase the trigger pulse time one millisecond from one millisecond up to the point where I don't hear or see any more change in spark intensity to demonstrate what we mean. Listen and watch. One millisecond. Two milliseconds. Three milliseconds. Four milliseconds. That was to six. Seven. Eight. If you had really good ears and eyes, you'll notice that between about three and four milliseconds, there was no change in the spark intensity. In closing, here's my whole setup. Of course, with the scope up there, which consists of the distributor simulator, the uh, Arduino uh, that's driving the LCD, listening to the Hall effect sensor that's down here behind the brass bar, looking at the strobe when it's dark, adjusting the pulse width of the uh, coil charge time, reading out the uh, important information of RPM change and the uh, uh, coil uh, charge time, which I'm going to turn down as we speak. No point in having it over four there. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, a simple switch and an Audi, uh, used Audi uh, coil pack, which is a four-wire coil pack, making sparks. Summing up, it's pretty easy to see when coil saturation occurs, so when I go to put this uh, uh, project into actual practice, I'll know how to write code for just the right amount of coil performance uh, without overheating. Having an LCD display avoids needing my computer connected to the Arduino to read RPMs and stuff. Those are those Arduino Robo Reds sure are easy to connect to with all those extra female pins. But many of the $4 clones come with both the stock female headers and extra male headers that make for improved connection reliability and additional pins for power and ground. Both types also have four pin terminals for plugging in I2C stuff to make it really easy here and right there. I am now ready to start working on ignition timing adjustment. Thanks for watching. Sorry about the fuzzy scope trace. It's the camera having trouble sensing the light.